Hello and welcome everybody. Today I shall talk about diffusion, the role it plays in electrochemical systems, and how it can be characterized and used experimentally to provide insight into electrochemical reactions. First of all, let us consider mass transport in electrochemical systems in general, which is described in full by the Nernst-Planck equation. The first term corresponds to diffusion, a net movement of molecules from a volume of a high concentration to a volume of a low concentration through locally random motion, driven by a concentration gradient. Also, it considers migration and convection, which are the motion of charged particles driven by an electric potential gradient, or by the motion of the electrolyte fluid itself. In many electrochemical systems, mass transport occurs overwhelmingly in one direction, so the equation can be simplified. Furthermore, because modeling mass transport of electrochemically active species is easier if it is carried out by diffusion only, and to calculate the diffusivity of those species, it is important to eliminate migration and convection experimentally. First, the electrolyte must remain stagnant, which eliminates convection. Then, a high concentration of salt that would not undergo any redox reaction in the potential range of interest, supporting electrolyte, can be added. As a result, current will be carried predominantly by the supporting electrolyte, effectively eliminating the migration of electrochemically active species. As a consequence, mass transport of electrochemically active species will occur solely by diffusion, which is described by the Fick's first law. When diffusion is the only method of mass transport, Fick's second law also applies, and it can be simplified to one dimension too. With both equations combined, the transient flux of the electrochemically active species, in our case, the oxidized species undergoing reduction, can be calculated using the listed conditions. These correspond to a sufficiently high potential step that would cause a total depletion of the reactant at the electrode surface, creating diffusion limitations to current. Thus, current can be related to the flux and, as a result, the concentration gradient, so a model of how current changes with time under diffusion limitations can be derived. The solution to this dynamic model is the Cottrell equation, which predicts that current will decay as 1 over the square root of time after a potential step. This can be explained by the thickening of the diffuse layer with time, which reduces the concentration gradient and therefore reduces the diffusion rate, so the diffusion limited current also decreases. However, the Cottrell equation has a few limitations. First, it may only be applied to diffusion limited current, and it predicts an infinite initial current, which is practically difficult to measure. Also, over time, convection will arise, which will break down the diffusion limitation assumption, rendering the Cottrell equation invalid. Finally, non-Faraday current, such as double layer charging, is not considered. Nevertheless, the Cottrell equation opens up a few experimental techniques to characterize diffusion in electrochemical systems. One of them is chronoamperometry, where current time data from a potential step experiment can be fit to this model and the diffusivity can be calculated. To this end, the potential step must be large enough to create a diffusion-limited current. Also, if the potential step and, therefore, current are reversed during the experiment, the reverse scan plot can tell us about the reversibility of the reaction and the stability of the reaction product. If the reaction is reversible and the reaction product is stable, the linearized plots of the forward and reverse scans will have the same slope. However, Chronoamperometry is limited by the limitations of the Cottrell equation, and it is also sensitive to measurement noise. One possible solution is chronocoulometry. By integrating the current time data, charge time data can be obtained, which may smoothen out the noise, and integrating the Cottrell equation produces terms that have previously not been accounted for. Double layer charge and surface excess, the latter of which corresponds to the charge of specifically adsorbed ions, before the potential step. In the particular case of potential step reversal during the experiment, models can be derived for the forward and reverse scan charge, which can produce linear plots. The slopes of those lines can be used to calculate the diffusivity, and their shapes also provide insight into the reaction. First, if no reaction species adsorb, the forward and the reverse scan plots must have the same y-intercepts, equal to the double layer charge. If the reaction product does not adsorb, which is the case for metal ion reduction reactions that produce solid metals, the double layer charge is the y-intercept of the reverse scan plot. Finally, 
If the reaction is reversible and the reaction product is stable, the slopes of both plots will be the same. Finally, diffusion can be also characterized using ultramicro electrodes, the size of which is smaller than the diffusion layer thickness, that is, on the order of micrometers. Thus, diffusion can no longer be considered unidirectional, which produces a static concentration gradient in a relatively short time before convection currents arise. For spherical and disk electrodes, this leads to the development of a steady state current from which diffusivity can easily be calculated. For cylindrical or band electrodes, a slowly decaying quasi-steady state current is observed, which can also be measured and plotted against time to obtain the diffusivity. I hope this video has been informative and helpful, and I thank you for watching.